Gradle is a notoriously hard build tool to get to grips with, even for Java developers with multiple years of experience. The Gradle build script can be intimidating. Changing it can feel like guesswork as you copy and paste your way to something that just about works. If this is you, then I know how you feel. I struggled, just like everyone else. Then I realized something so obvious, but so crucial that it made working with Gradle something that I looked forward to rather than dreaded. In this video, I'd like to share this same insight with you. I won't pretend that you can learn everything you need to know about Gradle in just a few minutes, but you will gain a fundamental understanding of the Gradle build script, which will help you more confidently work in your own project. So, are you ready to learn the secret? Okay, well, seven years ago, I was working on my first Gradle project, but I was clueless. Any changes to the build script, I had to ask for help. To me, it was a messy collection of gradely sounding words like implementation, with lots of strings and brackets all over the place. How anyone made sense of it was beyond me. After carrying on in this fog for far too long, I decided enough was enough and started to properly research Gradle. I devoured documentation and eventually learned this key insight which changed everything. Gradle build scripts are just code. And I know code. It sounds so obvious, especially with a name like build script. Of course it contains code. That's why it's so insane. But it is code, my friend. And as a developer, you know how to work with code. That means you can learn how to work with Gradle too. In the rest of the video, I'll show you exactly how. You see, the Gradle build script is written in either Groovy or Kotlin. These JVM languages have a lot of similarities, but we'll focus on Groovy since it's the most common. The Groovy build script is a file named build.gradle. Everything you see in this file is Groovy code. Anything that looks like magic can be explained with knowledge of just a few important Groovy language features. And you don't need to be a Groovy whiz to use Gradle. Just understand these three language features and you're all set. First, brackets are optional when calling a method. Groovy just doesn't care. For example, when we apply a plugin, we're actually calling an ID method, passing a string. In fact, in IntelliJ IDEA, we can control or command click through to see the method declaration. Once I'd figured this out, I realized that all those crazy keywords you see in the build script are just Groovy method calls, nothing to be afraid of. This leads us to the second language feature. Code in build.gradle actually operates on a Gradle project object. Yeah, the method calls here operate on the project object, which is of class type project. What's the project object? It represents the project you want Gradle to build. Most likely that's some Java code that needs to be compiled and packaged into a jar file. By calling methods on the project object, we give Gradle information about our project which it uses to build it correctly. And we can actually browse the Gradle API docs for project to see what methods we can call. You've probably seen the repositories method before, which tells Gradle where to search for dependencies. So when Gradle needs to compile your code, it knows where to download them from. At this point in my Gradle discovery phase, I gave myself a pat on the back. I thought I'd uncovered all the mysteries of the build script. But then I remembered those weird curly brackets all over the place. The third thing to know in Groovy is that curly brackets like this define a closure. A closure is a chunk of code that you pass around like a variable and can execute at a later point, a bit like a Java Lambda expression. Going back to the repositories example, the way we tell Gradle to look in Maven Central is like this. We call the repository method passing a closure Inside the closure, we call the Maven Central method, which adds Maven Central to the list of repositories for Gradle to look in. Remember that the closure is passed into the method. The code inside the closure isn't executed right away, but will be at a later point by Gradle. So why does Gradle use so many closures? Well, it lets it control execution of parts of the build script. Any slow or unnecessary code can be deferred or not run at all to improve performance. It's also a neat way to split up sections of the build script like plugins, repositories, and dependencies. This creates the Gradle DSL or domain specific language, the thing that on the surface doesn't look like code, 
but you now know is. So what next? I invite you to start viewing your build script as code. You can actually run any code you want in there. Try it out. Does this mean you should code up Pong in the build script? Probably not. Gradle build scripts are best when they're small and have minimal custom logic. But if you're like me, just knowing that you're dealing with code opens the door to explore the build script methods yourself to get a deeper understanding of this awesome build tool. So give it a go. Browse the API docs, use IDE autocomplete, view quick documentation, control or command click to view the source code. All the techniques you'd normally use with Java you can now use in your own Gradle project. And remember, Gradle build scripts are just code, and you know code. One vital build script feature is configuring repositories and dependencies. It's important to use the right implementation, compile-only or runtime-only configuration to set up your Java class path correctly. To learn all this and more, go check out this video at the top here. Until next time.